Hi guys, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology. Well, there's a pretty important event going on in July, and that's the Mars-Uranus conjunction in the sign of Taurus. And I've spoken about it in the July videos for each sign. If you haven't seen those, they are up on my channel. But Mars and Uranus are going to conjunct on the 15th. They'll be pretty much in orb. We'll be feeling that energy already by the 12th. It'll start to die down by the 19th. But this conjunction marks the beginning of a two-year cycle. These two only come together about every two years. I say about, it's a little, little bit less, but we'll say about every two years. And it'll wrap up in July of 2026 when we start a new cycle with a new Mars-Uranus conjunction but that is going to be in the sign of Gemini because Uranus by then will have moved into Gemini for seven or eight years. Uranus has an 84-year cycle around the sun, by the way, so it spends about seven, eight years in each sign. And I see this last conjunction in Taurus as sort of a wrap-up of Uranus's stay in Taurus. And if you think back, the last time this happened was August of 2022, and before that was of January 2021. So if you can remember that far back, if you keep a journal, if maybe there's something uh, that stands out in your agenda, you know, you can remember what energy was going on at that time. Now Uranus, of course, is the great disruptor, the great rebel. Uranus is, is neither good or bad. There's uh, good sides and bad sides to each planet, but Uranus's job is just to disrupt. You know, we associate the words like breakthroughs, breaking free, breakdowns, sudden insight or an event. We sometimes call Uranus the great awakener. Uranus rejects structure and limitations. Uranus follows a really structured Saturn in our solar system. So really wants to uh, push past limitations, past limits. You know, Uranus really doesn't like the rut or the status quo, wants us to move up, move on, wants us to learn. There's the idea of what is innovative with Uranus, futuristic, thinking outside the box. Uranus is also related to technology. Uranus rules actually uh, electricity and lightning. So the idea of something absolutely shocking happening or, you know, a shocking new idea Uranus also has a creative side, so it can be a creative insight, but in the idea of truly creating, of making something that has never been seen before, coming up with an idea that has never been thought of before. We sometimes, you know, use the words wacky or weird with Uranus. Sometimes we'll think of, you know, the, the weird artist uh, stereotype or the crazy genius. It's sudden change, disruptive change at times, but also permanent. So there's an idea that we can't go back or we can't unsee. Uranus is always sudden and unforeseen, but the goal is always, always to have us evolve. You know, sometimes that can come from within us. We'll become very rebellious and want to change things up. And I keep saying with Mars there, I'm suspecting that could be the case. But it can sometimes be something disruptive or um, really unforeseen and that really shakes things up coming in from the outside. There's the idea of it being, you know, something that can seem almost really um challenging at the same time you know it can be something that will be really really miraculous and again that idea of sudden flash of creative inspiration really that change and disruption to structure as well something that can be very again you know technology related uh just really futuristic really something that nobody has thought of before that's really you know outside of the box now, Mars is just pure energy. You've often heard me say Mars is the motor. Mars is the warrior. Mars was the god of war in mythology. So the idea of action, confrontation. You know, Mars is a physical energy and wants to do something and wants to act on something or act out. Mars makes us really assertive, really focused, really driven. So these two together is something suddenly disruptive and we react uh, sudden insight sudden desire to break free sudden des desire to really you know change it up shake it up throw off you know the the bonds the structure and move up and mars is just the drive and the assertiveness and the energy to really make it happen mars is not only physical energy mars also rules sex drive so i'm throwing that in <laughs> Alongside Uranus that likes to think outside the box and is sometimes uh, termed wacky or weird, there might be some interesting new experimentation going on there as well. Suddenly, what seemed um, kind of taboo or you hadn't thought of might, you know, come onto your um, 
come to mind or might be something you're going to be acting on. So I think I wrote in my blog, you know, there could be some peculiar or particular stuff going on there as well. So do know it is something that is probably going to make you act or Earth's going to have you being reactive. And as I said, it is the start of a two-year cycle. So take note of, you know, changes that come in, ideas that come in, because it's going to propulse you or catapult you into a very new and different place. The idea of being far into the future in two years. And of course, I was joking in some of the videos, you know, you don't have to wrap this all up. By the 19th of July, this is definitely the start of something new that is going to come in. I would say the worst thing to do with Uranus is really to resist change, to think, um, you know, I'm going to try to avoid that. There's going to be other aspects by Mars to Uranus over the course of the two years. Uh, of course, square, then opposition, then square again. And then, of course, we're going to come back to a conjunction in Gemini. But... The worst thing to do is resist. Do explore whatever is coming in. Try to find uh, the meaning in that, you know, where you're meant to go from there. If you have any creative ideas, not just creative in the sense, you know, uh, painting or sculpting or, uh, you know, music, but anything that is, you know, sudden insight, don't put it aside thinking, oh, that's too crazy or that's too weird. or I don't know how I would ever do that. Explore those ideas, you know, uh, write them down, draw them, um, write out the music, whatever your domain is, because again, you know, it is going to become something, but it is often so weird with Uranus that we just can't seem to wrap our head around it at first. Now, before I go into the sign by sign, let's talk about Taurus because this is happening in Taurus associated with the second house is actually the chart on the 15th of July. Yes, when this is exact. Taurus in the second house represents wealth, money, land in terms of resources. So the resources from the land, we often hear, you know, Taurus is associated with food. It's the sign that relates to farmers and bankers. So you know, I'm thinking maybe something new in terms of how we produce food, maybe something related to technology, you know, the idea of perhaps uh, cultured meat, something new in terms of currency, the idea of Bitcoin has been floated ever since uh, Uranus arrived in Taurus in 2018, yeah, in 2018. Um the idea of a universal currency, something that's independent from one country's currency. So we're not going to take one country, um, I think right now it's the US dollar, and you know use that as the base marker, but it's going to be something completely new and different from every other country's currency. That's also been put out there as a possibility. It can even be a different idea yet unheard of. So I'm hard pressed to <laughs> tell you what it is because you know I'd have to be able to have some really crazy insight idea into the future and I'm not super technology minded enough to do that or um, it, it's hard to predict what we can't predict often we say with Uranus just expect the unexpected and coming back to the idea of uh, resources of the land food with Taurus you know a long time ago food was a means of payment right people often paid in grain to their landlords literally the lord of the land and you know the serf or the peasant paid part of his um, crops to the the Lord as rent or, um, you know, to be allowed to live on that land and use it. You know, grain was also used in trade. The commodities market is a traded market. And remember, Taurus does relate to the stock market. You know, we think of a bull market. So you can see there's a land, resource, uh, wealth, banking tie in there. So, you know, maybe something, as I said, sudden technological and with Mars there, you know, the idea of maybe even something combative, you know, uh, there's going to be sides fighting over something or just something that's going to be implemented very dynamically, you know, and very uh, assertively or might meet some confrontation. And then, of course, Mars, you know, always can be uh, combative or contra confrontational, or really want to push forward and stand up, you know, for what he believes in. By the way, if you want the exact date, this is going to happen again in Gemini. It will be July 4th, 2026. We're looking at maybe like um, two years minus two weeks. Let's go through the sign by sign. 
Taurus, of course, this is happening in your sign. So it's your self image, your physical appearance, the way you show up for others or how others see you, who they know you as, or what they know you for. It's your online image as well. I am a Taurus sun. Interestingly, with uh, Uranus in my sign, I started this uh, YouTube channel and Uranus actually relates to astrology. So here's me with my astrology doing something techno and uh, having my own YouTube channel. You know, that's one thing. It could be a change to your physical appearance. Maybe you've gone through a couple of changes to your physical appearance. Maybe your online profile, you're showing up, you know, uh, when you didn't before, showing up on new platforms, for example. Aries, of course, this is going to be in your second house of wealth and income. You could see a sudden change to wealth and income. And I was saying in the July videos, I don't want to do scary astrology and sound like, uh, you know, something drastic is going to happen. But remember in your second house, this is your wealth, your resources, and your valuables. It can be, you know, a sudden idea that is going to have you boosting your wealth or boosting your income, a different source of income, a way to increase your income, a different way of using your resources. This is uh, not only money we make, but money we save. Or, you know, on a more, um, could I say, psychological level, you know, maybe a disruption is going to change how you see your valuables. You know, do you own things or do your, your things own you? You know, is what you own related to your self-esteem or, you know, your idea of uh, self-worth? Pisces, this, of course, is going to be in your house of communications, uh, your writing, your speaking. It's also your inner, inner dialogue, inner thought patterns. It is whatever you publish on a regular basis, like a newsletter or posting or blogs. It's also your siblings, your relatives. It's what is familiar. So it's our short trips around town. It's commutes to work. It's uh, short day trips. This can be, you know, a really sudden technological change, maybe something online. It could be a big creative opening again in relation to something online. This is going to have a lot to do, Pisces, with your personal self-expression. So, as I said, it could be showing up in a new way online, a more free way, um, a more free way, sounds like free way, but, you know, a freer way, finding really, you know, a way of expressing yourself. And if you have been held back, you know, maybe you're self-censoring or you felt censored by siblings, relatives, uh, other family, this is really going to be the time where you're going to start to break free. And again, it is a two-year cycle. So this could mark the start of you doing something really, really different. Aquarius, this is going to happen in your fourth house of home and family. This is the physical place you live. It is family of origin, family of choice. So our family dynamics, even family traditions. And I wrote in my notes, throwing off the ties. So it can be, you know, maybe family traditions that are too restrictive. You know, we do things this way in our family type of thing. It can be even in relation to where you live. You know, maybe you've outgrown where you live. And I was there's many examples, but, you know, maybe you live with your family of origin and you just feel, you know, it's time for me to move out. This is uh, too restrictive. You know, I just want to be on my own, be able to be freer. When we say Uranus is breaking free, you know, doing my own thing. It could be maybe your hometown. Maybe that feels too restrictive because, you know, everybody already knows, or I say already knows, knows who you are and sort of there's, um, you know, you've been labeled type of thing. And I say that <laughs> not in a bad way, but as someone who grew up in a small town, you know, you're labeled, right? You're known as that person. And you're just thinking, uh, this is too restrictive. I want to move somewhere else and start anew again. Or maybe it's just where you live, you know, too many rules. You're in a co-op or a condo, you know, and there's more that need for freedom. You know, I wrote even, you know, laptop lifestyle or a digital nomad type of thing. Again, take note of what comes up because this is the start of a two-year cycle. Capricorn, this is in your fifth house. This is everything to do with lovers, children, your creative pursuits. Definitely, definitely sudden creative inspiration. And I wrote in my notes, do act on it and definitely do act on it. Make it, write it, draw it, even if it is weird, even if it seems really, really strange to you. You know, it is going to just open you up to something completely new. In terms of lovers, children, you know, if there is restriction, you're really going to want to be breaking the bonds. And again, I was saying, you know, I don't want to tell you that your uh, romantic um, 
partner or your romantic uh, pursuit is going to, you know, completely fall apart or things are going to fall apart with your children. I was thinking of adult children more when I said this, but over the next two years, you can really find yourself in a new place, you know, and it can be just, yes, if something isn't working and too restrictive, you will want to break free from that. Remember, uh, Uranus also addresses the status quo or being stuck in a rut. So if your romantic liaisons all look the same, uh, you know, you're always winding up in the same pattern that you don't like, or, you know, the romantic partner you have now, you're just in a rut, it's not going anywhere. Yes, you could definitely be somewhere else very, very different uh, by the time, you know, this whole cycle is over. If it has to do with children, and again, I wrote, you know, adult children, maybe it is just a question of, you know, breaking free from too many limitations, uh, structure, responsibilities, and just wanting to move on and move up to something else. If you are Sagittarius, this is in your sixth house of work, workplace, workload, where we are of service to others. So even if it's not paid work, other uh, roles and jobs we have, it's our physical health, habits, lifestyle. Um, and our physical health is a, a usually affected by our job, especially if things aren't going well. I wrote in my notes, I'm out of here, you know, and that is really the energy of uh, Uranus, you know, just not doing this more anymore. I'm out of here. You know, if your job is stifling, if you're stuck in the, the status quo, you know, you won't be there anymore probably by the end of this cycle. The same for unpaid work, you know. Um, the sixth house is also the house of open enemies. I like to say people not working in our best interest. Remember, it's also employees and tenants as well. So that idea of, again, wanting to break free, you know, breaking away, uh, it can even be bad habits, you know, bad lifestyle, uh, just bad choices that have led to not good uh, or really good health situation. And remember, Mars is going to be the energy to make that happen. You know, it could have you working very, very hard. You know, all this does tie in because, you know, often our work, Stress at work leads to bad eating, leads to bad lifestyle habits, or we're working too much. We don't have time to, you know, exercise or just, you know, take care of ourselves in a better way. But definitely this can mark something that is going to initiate the beginning of change. You know, even people who leave the corporate world and do something else, uh, either related or completely unrelated, but they just want more freedom. This can definitely be the start of that cycle that is going to bring you to that point. Scorpio, my rising sign. This, of course, sits across from you in your seventh house of partnerships. Includes business partners, uh, life partners, your exes, rivals, and the competition. Things just won't be the same there either. You're really going to want to break free and move up. You could even be very, very confrontational in wanting to get that. You know, if it's the same old, same old if you feel trapped, if you feel put upon, that just won't do. And again, in your July video, I was saying, I don't want to do scary astrology, but if you are in a relationship where you're just feeling trapped, you know, where you're really not free to be who you are, where it's just become more and more structured and more and more stifling, you are definitely going to push back against that. Same thing with an ex. You know, if for some reason you still have contact with an ex and you're really restricted, you have to act a certain way, you can only say a certain uh, certain things, Uranus really doesn't like that. <laughs> Mars is going to make you very, very combative and very, very forthright. Same thing to do with rivals too. You know, anybody that makes you feel hemmed in, makes you feel stuck, you know, seems to be putting up limitations, are going to be uh, confronted <laughs> and dealt with over the course of these two years. Libra, this is going to be in your eighth house of other people's money. And I wrote no strings. If you are hemmed in because of debt, because this does include debt, loans, mortgages, inheritances, legacies, you know, the idea of a family business, uh, you know, uh, this is the family business and this is how it's run and this is what we do, you know, or an, an inheritance that, um, you know, might be coming to you, but you have to conform in a certain way or the, the idea of, you know, with a partner, business partner, life partner, how much money is contributed to what and who pays what, you know, where your money is going. There is definitely going to want to be a feeling of breaking free. There's an idea if, that money is setting up limitations because you're hemmed in by debt, right? Um, 
your money every month goes off to paying so much debt and there's none left over to do anything. Or as I said, you know, you have to conform because of a certain legacy or because of an inheritance or because of, you know, what your partner is deciding to do with the money. Definitely going to be pushed back against that. And again, with Mars, you can be very combative, very much standing up, you know, and, and wanting to to push forward. At the same time, Uranus can bring you a really creative, innovative way to increase a partner's money. And you're going to work very hard at it. Remember, Mars is always that energy and that drive to get things done. So maybe you might have a really out of the blue, you know, hit us like a bolt of lightning. That's really Uranian energy idea of how you can help a business partner or again, you know, your life partner increase their wealth and very much the possibility that's going to be related to technology. Virgo, this of course is in your ninth house. The ninth house already deals with our life outlook and expanding our horizons. Uranus really is going to want you to study and learn, maybe in a very hands-on way with Mars. Remember, the ninth house has to do with higher education, medicine, the law, long-distance travel, whatever is mass media communication. So you might be taking classes, maybe in a very um, different way, very uh, possibly online, you know, something that is just out there, you know, of course, with Uranus. Maybe you're going to discover something new, you know, a really new way of doing this. And you're going to be exploring that. You might really be looking for, you know, I said this is uh, mass media, the web. You might be really looking for, you know, that cutting edge stuff. What are the latest ideas out there on, um, you know, the ninth is also, you know, religion. It's uh, dogma. It's propaganda. Also, what, what are the latest ideas, right, especially in terms of, you know, what is innovative with Uranus about you know, life outlook, you know, what, how, what is science? I think that we live in such a fascinating time because science and the metaphysical are starting, you know, to join up in a way and show the same things, you know, like now we can do brain scans of when people meditate, you know, there's a time when meditation was like, oh, poo poo, crazy stuff, you know, hippie stuff, you know, but now you, we can actually see the effect it has on the brain. So you might be really exploring those cutting edge ideas, you know, where, and I'm, I'm struggling a bit here because it's not a, a field I'm familiar with, but, you know, like hack your mind, you know, and how can you, uh, you know, neurologically, uh, you know, help your brain do this or help your mind do that. And I hope I'm, I hope I don't sound so vague here, Virgo, but I think you get the idea of what I mean. You know, you might do that sort of life outlook, mind expansion work in a really different way for you something really off you know the beaten track that's something also Uranus doesn't like likes to go off the beaten track but I put like retreat work like you go on a retreat at a monastery or a convent you know or a spiritual re retreat somewhere even traveling somewhere far away to go on this uh, retreat so really you're going to be exploring some pretty um, cutting edge stuff over the next two years and is really really probably going to change your life outlook Leo, this is in your 10th house of success, the house of public reputation, ancient astrology. It's also people who outrank us on this ladder of success. There's really a lot of uh, idea of hierarchy with the 10th house. So people in authority, it can be a parental authority. It can be bosses, higher ups, um, government authority as well. And remember, if I were to switch this chart around and put you in the first house, Leo, Taurus would be here in the 10th where Mars and Uranus are and sitting square to your first house. So there's always a bit of an idea of chafing between the 10th and the first. You know, the idea of restrictions and obligations related to success. I even gave the example because I'm thinking of my many, many years in the workplace. You know, sometimes you have a uh, someone higher up that's going to help you up help you up yes up the ladder but you wind up tasked with things that you don't really like or even things that go against um, your integrity for example you know so that you are really going to push it back against you know Uranus can even have you questioning if you want to follow this path of success you know if you're climbing the ladder of success but the ladder isn't against the right wall which means you might change where you are seeking success you know, maybe you just don't want to do that anymore. Uh, maybe you're going to change your target. As I said, you know, put that ladder against another wall. It can also be sudden insight 
into how to increase your status and your success. You know, and remember the 10th house, it doesn't have to be work. It can be another area. You know, there's even the idea of uh, vocation there. So, you know, the idea of if there are people in authority, you know, hemming you in or creating a lot of barriers or have been creating a lot of uh, barriers and restrictions, you're really going to throw that off. There's going to be the idea of really wanting to not have that having a hold on you. So it can be these people having a cold, uh, a cold, a hold on you, or it can just be where you are striving so hard for success that you've created a whole bunch of limitations and boundaries around yourself and you're just finding it too much. Or again, as I said, sudden insight, creative, technological, outside the box thinking that can help propulse you towards uh, higher levels of success. And definitely with Mars energy there, that is either going to be the drive to confront uh, the situation or people and say, I'm not doing this anymore, or it can be just the drive and the energy and the hard work to make it happen. Cancer, this is your in, 11, in your 11th house of groups of friends, uh, teams you're on, organizations you belong to, usually with the idea of a common interest. It's also our long-term goals, or we sometimes say hopes and wishes. This can be restrictions of a group, uh, the idea of too much conformity. Remember the 11th house, there is the idea, uh, it relates to Aquarius, of yes, we can be different. And interestingly, um, Uranus is the modern rule of Aquarius. Yes, we can be different, but we all have to be equal, or we all have to you know, be the same in a certain way. So maybe there's a group that is just too restrictive. Maybe there's too many demands, too many rules, too many boundaries. Maybe you've just been there too long, and it's the same old thing, and you're just not progressing anymore. In terms of your long-term goals, there can be sudden insight, maybe a sudden idea, you know, of how you can sort of really advance that, you know, move on very quickly towards a long-term goal. With Mars there, you're definitely going to pursue it very intensely. Maybe you're just going to change your goal. You know, maybe what you already have in mind, this sudden flash of insight with Uranus, you're going to see how it's not really that or how it's going to modify and you're going to want to change it up and sort of change what this goal is. You know, maybe you really like to, I could, you know, there's so many examples, but maybe you, your long-term goal has always been to write a book about something, but then you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to podcast about that at the same time. You remember Whatever Uranus gives you as insight ideas, even if it seems too strange, even if it's even not related to your goal, you know, and you're thinking, oh, this is so weird, write it down, put some ideas down, think about it, because this is, again, you know, the start of a two-year cycle. And finally, Gemini, this, of course, is happening in your 12th house, right? Your inner world or where we go to get in touch with other worlds. You are going to explore new practices very actively. Um, and dare I say with Uranus, it will really be something very, very different for you. Also explore what is holding you back, you know, subconscious patterns, subconscious templates. It can be something that is very, very different for you, Gemini, very weird, very, very much outside the box. Um, I'm tempted to say, you know, the 12th house relates to Pisces. Um, there's the idea of diving deep into those other worlds in terms of self-exploration. There's many ways to do this, right, through uh, meditation. We can do it through dream work. But related to the 12th house in Pisces, we also are in the realm of substances, even substance abuse. You know, I hear the... Um, the term plant medicine used a lot. Also, I'm not passing any judgments. It's not something I know a lot about. But there's the idea of, do we want to explore other realities or are we trying to flee reality? So that's always sort of the danger when we get into the 12th house danger. That sounds even almost like too, too intense a word. But so when we're exploring the 12th house, there's that idea of, yes, tapping into other worlds, but we don't want to become that that we don't want that place to become the place where we go to hide or where we go to escape reality. Remember, exploring the inner self is always with the goal of understanding ourselves better and be able to uh, function ourselves, function better within reality. 
And Mars there, you know, there could be that tendency to throw ourselves headlong into something. Mars can be very impulsive. So I would just say, you know, do your research. Um, don't use any practice to flee. This is really, you know, the voyage of self-discovery. So guys, that is pretty much everything I wanted to tell you about this Uranus-Taurus conjunction, a uh, Uranus-Taurus, Uranus-Mars conjunct in Taurus. I'm really excited to see what's going to come up again. Do, you know, write this stuff down, whatever comes through your mind, because it is the start of a two year cycle. So it might not seem like anything or it might just seem like some, uh, you know, really disruptive annoyance, but it is probably the beginning of something very, very interesting. Guys, hope this was helpful. Drop me a like, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.